you know, both you and I ran for office in the Midwest. We, we grew up here. Uh, we, um, you know, we, we, we sort of represent a, a, a perspective on progressive politics in the Midwest. And uh, we are in a, at a bit of a political crossroads. It's not just the hatchet job that the Supreme Court just took to American life and liberty. It's also the fact that, you know, you look at, um, at the prospects for Democrats in the fall, they don't look very good, particularly in communities uh, where, where we live. And I want to ask you, you know, how how do you think about what the party is 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 doing now? What are we doing wrong, and what does it look like uh, to, uh, to 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 really reframe um, what we're about and and who we are for the kind of voters that um, that that you were successfully able to to court in your elections in the past? Or or the other question is, are we too far gone? No, I mean, I don't think we're too far gone. Um, I mean, I, I hope not. Like, if we are, I mean, I ain't gonna. Like if we are, like I'm going to be the last to know, and you and you're going to be the yeah. last to know because we're just going to be out there fighting. Um, you know, I think yes, I think that there is a way that we frame things or think about things as a party that misleads us as a party, and that is that we are repeatedly having the wrong conversation within the left, and that conversation is repeatedly: should we be more left? Should we be more moderate? And that conversation is always framed, not around what's right, but around what's going to attract the very voters that you and I are talking about and the very voters that we've had to go after in our careers in the Midwest. And the reason I think it's the wrong question is because it assumes that these voters, and I know you agree with this because we've talked about it, that these voters have like a spreadsheet and they're going down this list and they're going like, now see, I'm with the Bernie people on this or the AOC people on this. But now on this one, and they're just not like persuadable voters are trying to figure out if they can believe what you say, but they'll only figure out if they can believe what you say, if they've already decided that you give a shit about them. And the way that we demonstrate that has nothing to like, you could be Joe Manchin or you could be AOC. It don't matter. Those voters see a Democrat. And so we got a choice. And that choice is, are we going to make a decent argument for what they think we're about? And they don't make much of a distinction between what we're about. And now, look, in West Virginia and in New York, they do because they know those people. But in where we live, those are just some, some Democrats on TV, right? And so to me, it's about, it's about one thing. It's like four things within one thing. And the, and the one thing is what people want for their family. And there's four things they want. And they want their family to be happy, to be healthy, to be safe, and to be nearby. You know, we're kind of learning how to talk about happy we're pretty good at healthy and safe. We're starting to really get the message that you lean into giving everybody healthcare and access to a doctor and you lean into things like making sure that there's gun safety laws that keep people safe and, and that we're not constantly having you know, shootings and that kind of thing, that that's, that's something we should be talking about. But happy, we're kind of figuring out. But the one we whiff on real big and that Democrats like you and I see that I think the party as a whole whiffs on is nearby. Mm. And this is where having leadership that is almost exclusively from the coast is a problem. It is not a problem that people from the coast tend to be maybe a little bit more liberal than people in the middle of the country. That's what everybody thinks is the problem, but that's not the problem. The problem can be boiled down to the time uh, I sat down with Marty Walsh, then the mayor of Boston, who, you know, we had a great conversation about this. And I was explaining that people where I'm from, what they're worried about is, and I'm worried about it too with young kids. One day my kids are going to need to get a job. And are they going to stay in the place where I've raised them, where we have everything established that feels like home? Or are they going to feel like they have to leave? And that is every issue. That's economics. It's, it's college debt. It's whether they have uh, rights to abortion. It's everything. And he said, you know what? That is the difference because my biggest problem right now with regard to that is this is the place where those kids come to and I don't have enough jobs for all of them. Hmm. I really appreciate that. I also think that um, you know when we talk about these issues, uh, it's almost like we've been captured by a 90 zero sociology textbook. We use these big words yeah. to convey pretty simple ideas rather than using smaller words to convey big ideas. And I think there's a real problem with doing that because it is an implicit way of talking down to people. When you use yes. words that they don't quite see themselves in, when they say you're, you're talking kind of like somebody I've seen on TV, but it doesn't seem like you're talking to me because if you are, I don't know why you're talking like that. Um, it tells me that we're a lot more interested sometimes in performing to people who already agree with us than we are in persuading people who don't yet agree with us. And there's almost like a certain, um, you, you, you're either giving up on the person in front of you or you're giving up on your ability to persuade them. And I think either of those two things is political suicide. 
and I don't know why we keep doing it. Well, and what's worse is we kind of eat our own because then when we do work, try to persuade people who may not yet agree with us, there are people on our side who will then say that we're somehow compromising our site. How right. the fact I go out and I'm, I'm trying to convince people who voted for Trump to you know, vote for you know, Democrats. I, I have people on the left who say to me all the time, like, that, that's just wrong. I won't talk to those people. Those people are racist. They're all these things. And I'm like, okay, fine. They're my neighbors. So I got to live around them. So you can see it as I'm somehow compromising myself, myself because I want to persuade them to vote our way. Or you can see it the way I see it, which is I'm not here trying to save souls. If they're, if they're voting for Trump, like that ain't good for them either. So, you know, right. of course I'm going to engage them. Right. I, um, you know, the, the, the number, of, number of times I've been told about uh, other people's racism, I'm like, look, you don't have to tell me about racism. You know, I've been, right, I've been right. Muslim in this body my whole life. I, I know racism. <laughs> I'm just saying that at the end of the day, racism is a thing and the person in front of you is another thing. And, and you have a responsibility to engage with that person in the best single way to take on racism is not necessarily to label that person a racist and think that somehow you're going to persuade them. It's actually to just call out the, the, the issue as it stands, put it out there and say, look, this is, this is a thing. I believe in you and I believe in, in us. And I think we can get through this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like somehow all of these issues, and I just think that it, in part, it's the nature of our public conversation. Everything gets, gets flattened by, the social, by social media in a way where there is no nuance. And it's more about trying to uh, call something or declare something um, rather than trying to change something. And I, I worry a lot about um, what the implications of that are for us and our own ability to have a, a thoughtful conversation and, and to win people over. Because in the end, if you really want to take on racism, declaring someone to be a racist is not the best way to do it because you've now, you've now thrown the gauntlet down and uh, all they're going to do is back justify why what they did isn't racist rather than actually saying, all right, look, we can move past this thing and there's an opportunity for us uh, to be better together. Um, and look, that behavior is not okay, but you, right, you're better than that. Um, but it's like we've lost that ability uh, in, in our public discourse. So Yeah, I, I, will, I will tell you to that end, um, you know, I'm sitting here talking to you. Two hours ago, I was talking to Megan Kelly because, uh, you know, like I have a book that benefits uh, veterans. My royalties go to support uh, the fight against veteran suicide and veteran homelessness. And that's the gospel I'm trying to preach. And I don't think we should feel that differently about politics. Um, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to platform the wrong people, but it means like, are we going to go to somebody's platform and make our case? Like I sure am. Yeah. And I, 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 um, I appreciate that perspective. Uh, Jason, I really appreciate you joining us uh, today. I know your schedule is super busy. Um, uh, I do hope that folks uh, who are listening today will um, pick, out the, pick up the book. It's called The Invisible Storm. It's an excellent read. Um, it really is, you know, you, you read books from politicians and you know you're being, um, you're, you're, you're being told a very particular, a very manicured story. This is not that. So I really hope that, uh, that folks will pick it up. Uh, one last question for you. Um, are we going to see you on, uh, on a ballot anytime soon? Uh, probably no, but, you know, read the book and get the fuller answer, I guess, is what I would tell people. Um, but yeah, look, I, um, uh, I'm really enjoying my life right now. And I would have maybe said that before, but now I mean it. And the, the thing is, is that in the past, um, you know, I ran for office because I cared about things and I wanted to make a change, but I also, part of me was as, uh, you know, pathological in doing it as I was because I couldn't deal with what was going on with me at the time. I, the present was intolerable. Uh, and now the present is uh, quite pleasant. And I'm coaching Little League and playing baseball and hanging out with my wife and my son and my daughter and uh, doing a job I really care about. And so at some point, is there a good chance that I will maybe be a, a candidate again for something? Yeah, probably. Um, I don't know when that is, but right now I'm having an awfully good time. And uh, yeah. And I really appreciate the chance to talk to you about the book and I appreciate the kind words. So thanks. Man. Well, we wish you well. Hope that, uh, that we do get that opportunity in the future and, um, and, uh, really appreciate your courage, uh, in writing this book. And, um, and I hope that folks will check it out. Jason, thank you again for your time. Thank you. Hey friend, thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and have more of your questions answered, click the subscribe button on this screen. And if you want to support me and want more content, I hope that you'll subscribe to the incision, my newsletter, there, I reflect a bit further, go a bit deeper on some of these issues, and I interview some of the leading thinkers of this moment. The link to subscribe is on the screen here. See you soon.